Hello, this is Ben Lubar, and I am going to do a little special thing on this third episode. I got a new microphone, and I'm just going to explain what's going on with the XCOM story for people who don't know. So, uh, the XCOM story is basically that the aliens invaded in XCOM Enemy Unknown, and regardless of how you ended that game, the canonical ending is that the aliens won. So you lost XCOM Enemy Unknown. And then in XCOM 2, the tutorial shows a, a soldier named Jane Kelly and a soldier named Chief Officer Bradford, who was in the bridge in XCOM 1. I think he's over here. Yeah, that's him. No, that's not him. Where is he? Anyway, uh, it shows Bradford and Jane Kelly. Jane Kelly being new to Central XCOM 2. Oh, there he is. There's Central. Mostly Dr. Shen's work. I haven't felt so useful in a long time. They rescue the commander from this tank that's like holding the commander, and you're in some kind of weird suit that is preventing you from moving or anything. It's kind of like VR. Basically, what they find out is that the aliens were using you as a simulator to simulate battles for them and generate strategy. So it is very likely that the entirety of XCOM 1 took place after you had already lost. So, in XCOM 2, we've got... The Avenger, which is this big alien spacecraft that was repurposed by the Rebels. And we're trying to fight the aliens. So I'm just going to continue and then I will explain when I get into the next mission. Let's see, we've got two contacts already. I guess we could contact Mexico. Uh, those infiltration missions are... Let's see... Uh, 31 in... Okay, this one's definitely not going to work. So I'm going to abort that one. They're all here. We'll be home in a jiffy. And this one... That might work, so we'll leave that for now. I was playing on a different save for a while, and I realized that I had been doing a lot of things wrong, so I'm going to fix that in this episode. For example, I had been sending a full squad every time. Oh. Boost infiltration is not available, so I guess we should just abort that one. Oops. Okay, so. Infiltration depends on the number of soldiers that are there and their equipment. So if there's too many soldiers on a mission that has a short infiltration time limit, then you just flat out can't do it. Oh, here's story. So much of my own research based upon this simple design. If only I had no. Ah, Commander, excellent timing. There's been some progress. I've managed to break down several key components of the chip implanted into your skull. My analysis reveals that its primary function was that of a conduit passing a vast amount of data directly to your cerebral cortex. With the primary connection severed, much of that data is lost. Several fragments do remain, however. Ghosts, if you will. Observe. Tactical combat simulations. War games. The sheer volume of encounters you were processing was astounding. It... It is truly remarkable that you survived as long as you did. Though this may seem disconcerting, there is still some good news. This chip bears a striking resemblance to a medical implant I briefly assisted in developing at the Gene Therapy Clinic in New Providence. My understanding was that the implants were intended for high-ranking Advent officers only, captains or above. Retrieving a chip from such an officer would be the only way to know for certain. A greater understanding of these implants would undoubtedly benefit us all, Commander. Okay. New objective added. So that sets my objective to clearly been modified to allow for their subordinates to uh, see new orders psionically. 
the implanted chip. So now my objective is that I need to get an officer, an advent officer corpse, and do an autopsy. I do not have an advent officer corpse, but I do have an advent trooper, and I think I have an advent officer corpse, so maybe I need to do an advent trooper autopsy first. We could start that. Here comes some story. Knowing that my past surgical experience is limited, I am sure the crew appreciates that I hone my skills on fallen advent forces before triaging our own wounded. To the uninitiated, the common advent trooper is seemingly human. The aliens have disguised this most glaring divergence from the human form with a carefully designed helmet. Okay, so that'll be done soon. Having successfully completed the operation necessary to remove the commander's implant. Let's just check if there are any recruits. There are no recruits. Another subject for comparative analysis. And I'll check the black market. We'll need to completely scan oh. this region before we can establish Okay. With well, we'll finish resistance. scanning and then we'll check the black market. We stick around and finish the job, but the choice is yours. Okay. We have now contacted New Mexico, which is just Mexico. Not not the US state. See, now we have access to New Brazil. Avenger plotting new course. So let's see. There is not really anything we want from there. Oh, we have a guerrilla operation. Okay. So this one has an expiration of 6 days, 15 hours. So we need to have a squad that infiltrates in less than that amount of time. For Eastern and United preferably States. we want to infiltrate in much less than that amount of time because then we can keep infiltrating until the enemies are vulnerable. So let's see, currently we have a 7 day infiltration time which is not going to work at all. So I'm going to remove some of these soldiers from the squad. Uh, now we're down to 5 days. I guess that would be fine. Uh, let's make sure. Yeah, we do. We do have two med kits. Uh, can we give people? Yes, we can give them weapon upgrades. How many do we have? We have one suppressor and one advanced suppressor, and apparently those reduce infiltration time. So let's give two of our soldiers those. Okay. So that's all of our weapons. Uh, can we build anything? Huh. So, I don't think I'll build any of these. I did add a few mods since last time that will hopefully make this a smoother experience. But let's just do it. Infiltration start. So now they're going to be infiltrating, which means that I can't use those soldiers for anything. And they will be at the place where the mission will start. And that number is currently at 0%. As time passes, it will increase. When it gets to 100%, then it'll pause the game and let me choose whether I want to go there. I'm probably not going to go there right away. So let's see. I can go to the US West, which I believe is where we started. Let's see. Yeah, that's where we started. Okay. So I'm going to just waste some time here, I guess. Okay, we finished training. So that's one of our squaddies that is upgraded from a recruit. And we have emergency life support is a PCS, but we don't have any need for personal combat sims on a troop that isn't going anywhere yet. Let's see, do we have... No, we don't have enough supplies to build anything. Uh, do we have any... We have our engineers clearing debris. That one's almost done. And that's all we can really do in the ship. We've cleared the debris. Okay. I'm not going to build anything there just yet. We got the guerrilla tactics school. I think at some point we want an advanced warfare center so that our troops uh, heal faster. But apart from that, 
That's 25% infiltrated. Oh, we found a new guerrilla operation. Okay. This one is hacking a computer. So if we have a specialist, we want to send them on this mission. That is a specialist because they have a... What is it called? i to look this up. A gremlin. It's like a drone that flies around with them. So that's mission exp exp mission expiration is four days, 16 hours. So we have to remove some of these soldiers because otherwise we won't get 100% infiltration. Uh, let's remove the gunner. That'll be close, but I'd rather have more people than less people and not have a chance. Let's see, is there somebody else we can give a med kit to? Let's give the ranger a med kit, just in case uh, the specialist has any damage taken. Okay, so I guess we're going with that. So there they go. So that infiltration will start. We're going to finish the trooper autopsy. The outcome of this research can only further our advances, Commander. Despite a thorough analysis. Yep, so that is it. We did need to autopsy the trooper before we could autopsy the officer. So we have access to the proving ground now, and we don't have enough scientists to autopsy the... Oh, we should assign research. <laughs> hmm. I guess we should do a sectoid autopsy because we don't have enough to do the trooper autopsy. Though I was never witness to one myself, countless observers attest to the existence of a much smaller, less intimidating variant of the sectoid that took part in the original invasion. In the time since, this new being, the product of clear genetic manipulation, is now a familiar face to our forces operating in the field. Okay, do we have enough? So yes, we do have enough supplies to build a proving ground. So I'm going to build that. And we have an unstaffed engineer because we just finished uh, excavating. So we're going to put her there. And then that's all we can do for now. I don't think we can afford another. Do we have anything that will give us a scientist? I don't think so. No. So, let's go to the black market and see if we can get a scientist there. Nope, no scientist. So, I guess we'll just wait. Wait it out. Either we'll have another guerrilla operation we can do, or something will... Oh, there we go. Guerrilla operation. So this one gives us six days to get in, and it's a smash and grab mission which means I should put as many soldiers as I can because each soldier can only carry one item out of there and the items are worth supplies let's see uh, we could take some people from another squad let's see do we have yeah we have a specialist we can bring uh, what are we doing you got three days and we get up to six days, so we might be able to actually bring a full squad. I don't know. Uh, let's see, do we have another specialist? Yeah, let's bring that other specialist. Uh, let's switch that out for a med kit. Because for these missions, we want to make sure we have as many people able to carry stuff out as possible. That's five days. Uh, six days, one hour. Yeah, I guess we could do it with seven people. That looks fine. Uh, does Assault have something that would be better? No, not really. So, we're going to start infiltrating. There they go. And how's our infiltration going? Still not done. 
got the new gorilla operation. Uh, this one's 29 intel. It looks like we're not going to be able to do this efficiently. Because we've got one day to do it. Basically. I don't think we could even send that few soldiers, so we're going to ignore that for now. Uh, that is our infiltration finishing there. The enemies are still normal readiness, so I'm going to wait until we're at the end of the infiltration time. Uh, now the enemies are vulnerable. And this one, the enemies are normal. So let's go for the half workstation thing. Operation Spider Walker. And I will explain more things as we're there. So this is going to be evacuate with a flare, so I need to remember that we're evacuating. There's no, like, fixed mission endpoint. Okay. The access point we're after is just ahead. Move to secure the area. Expect hostile resistance. So we start concealed in this mission, which means that the aliens will not know we're here unless they either flank one of my soldiers or we walk into their line of sight. Double for like their sight distance, I guess. And if we do see aliens, we get a little chance to react before the aliens get to shoot at us. Out. So that, that tower is going to be able to see us if we get too close. Oh, that alien saw us. We've been spotted. That was a drone. Okay. So that drone has that little yellow diamond, I guess, shape near it. That means that the drone has one point of armor, so any attack we do against it will deal one less damage. Go, go, go. And because everything deals one less damage, we probably need to shoot it with two soldiers, because we can do up to five damage, but we can do as little as three, and three would not kill it, because it has three health and one armor. And if we miss, then it doesn't work at all. Oh, okay, that was lucky. We got one of the two outcomes that would do it for us. Uh, so now that we're no longer concealed, we have to be more careful because any alien we see can attack on their next turn. Target package secure. Aliens can only attack when they have already been revealed. So they can't attack if they reveal themselves on their turn. So that alien cannot attack. But they can get into a better tactical position. Now they're flanking like almost every one of my soldiers. So I'm going to see if I can get them. 33. Uh, we do have a grenade we can throw. But it won't reach far enough. It might reach far enough actually. I guess I'll try it. Yep, that killed one of them. If you use a grenade to kill an enemy, then you do lose the loot that it would have given you. So you can't, like, pick up their weapon parts or something. Uh, 50%, I guess that's as good as it's gonna get. I'm not gonna use another grenade right away. Yep, that worked. Okay, so another mechanic of this game is cover. Right now, this character has full cover. You can see the shield is full. If I move to here, he'll have half cover, which is less effective at making enemies miss. Heading out. Uh, as the player of this game, I have a mechanic where I can almost get somebody out of cover. And that means that when they're almost out of cover, then I can shoot at them uh, as if, like it gives me an extra bonus aim, even though I'm not flanking them. If somebody is flanked, 
that means that they have the yellow shield. And then the yellow shield means basically any attack against them ignores, well, attack from the person who's flanking them will ignore their cover and also deal some extra, like, critical damage. It has an extra chance of critting. Okay. Can I get up here? No. Let's see if I can attack from back here. I don't think I can. Yeah, I can't even attack from there. So, can I attack there? No. I guess this character is just too far away. I'll put him over here. So another mechanic of this game, in this upper right corner, is that most missions have a time limit that's measured in a number of turns. Uh, if you run out of time, then you fail the objective and a lot of other bad things can happen. In some of the missions, you can fail multiple times, and each time you fail, it just adds more enemy soldiers to fight you, such as those uh, supply grabbing missions. Okay, we're gonna keep moving forward. Uh, there we go. I just realized that this is a church, and it's also Reverend Ryan's first mission as one of my soldiers. Here we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna flank that enemy. Now they have a yellow shield icon. And that means that I get extra crit chance, and they're... Uh, they have no cover bonus from the cover, so they won't be harder to hit. And I can't get there on this turn, because the blue area is where I can move in one action, and the yellow area requires two actions. So if I need two actions, then I can't continue and attack on the same turn. I think I'll go here. Okay, I'm gonna keep explaining mechanics. Those yellow bars above the soldiers' heads are armor, basically. If that gets taken off, but the blue bars all stay full, then the soldier does not get wounded. Which means that after the mission, the soldier can immediately go on another mission. Good to go. If the soldier is wounded, they have to wait until they recover, and if a soldier gets wounded enough times, they can become shaken, which makes them easier to hit with uh, psychic attacks, basically. An example of psychic attack, or psionic attacks, I should say, uh, from the previous videos would be those purple attacks that the sectoid was using. Sectoids look like a big, uh, angry naked man, I guess, with a weird alien head. Oh, there's another, uh, drone. So even though that drone is flanking me, I don't really care. Because I want to kill the Advent Trooper. The drone might do a little damage to me, but the trooper's gonna do way more. Plus, I have more soldiers behind me than I have in front of me. So I can bring this soldier around and shoot the drone directly. Okay. So I've got nine turns left, and because none of my soldiers are specialists, I need to get actually up to the laptop to hack it. I can't send a drone over because I don't have any drones. Okay. Judging by the fact that the music stopped, I'm assuming that means that uh, all of the enemies that were currently active are dead. I don't know if that means that all the enemies are dead. Commander, we have confirmation of the exposed access point. Okay. Let's see. That is cover. And I know that there's no enemies in there because I can see the civilians. And if there were enemies, I would also be able to... Oh, there are enemies behind there, though. But the good thing is, 
those enemies were revealed on their turn, which means they can't attack me right now. Uh, let's see, can I hit from there? Might it be worth it? Uh, that person can hit. The way I know that they can hit is there's a little icon on the health bar of an enemy. If it's got a red, uh, like, uh, red icon, that means that I can hit them. If there's no icon, that means I can't. And that shows me if I can hit them at the location that I'm trying to move them to. So I'm going to move this soldier here, because that's within the blue moving distance. So I'll do that. And then, let's see, I could shoot the sectoid, but instead I'm going to hack. And since this is a required hack, I have a 100% chance to finish it correctly. And I have 0% to get either of the rewards, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. So we hacked the workstation, that's the objective. And now that we've completed the objective, we need to evacuate. And the nice thing about this mission, in particular, is that I can choose where I evacuate. So I'm going to put the evacuation point there. And that will appear in a later turn. <clears throat> and as long as I'm evacuating, I'm going to use this mod that I got that lets people carry corpses. I've got it. Uh, okay, so they can't do anything right now. I'm going to bring this soldier over here and pick up the uh, advent officer. Did I have a soldier over here? Oh yeah, right there. I don't know where they were in cover. I think that might have been their cover. Well, first of all, yeah, I already attacked with that soldier. And there is still a sectoid up. Sectoid is... Oh, we can't see him right now, but he's there. I should probably... Oh, I can't put someone else in. Okay, I'll just put him close Got enough that. that he can shoot on the next turn. Uh, can't do anything with Salamander. Is there a corpse I can grab? Nope. So let's also move uh, Reverend Ryan up. Got it. And hopefully he'll be able to shoot the sectoid if whoever that other person was isn't. And because I already did all my moves, you know, I will move her further away. I guess there's no animation for the drone being carried, huh? Okay, so the sectoid's gonna attack. That's a psionic attack. It, it was a disorient, which means he will be less effective when shooting, and he can't move as far. But he can still move far enough to get into the evacuation zone. Okay, so my question is, do I want to risk it and try to get the sectoid, or should I just evacuate everyone? I'm gonna take the safe route, and just evacuate everyone. I'm gonna even ignore that loot. So let's go. Everybody needs to evacuate. Soldiers that are carrying someone or something in this case move slower, but they can still move the full distance, and because it's a turn-based game, that doesn't matter at all, so they can just move normally. It just takes longer to animate. So I'm gonna evacuate them. As far as I can remember, nobody actually got hit on this mission on my side. Which means they can all go immediately back into the next mission. So let's see. 
Yep, nobody wounded, and we just missed the sectoid kill, but that doesn't matter. So now that we've finished the mission, any soldier with enough experience from that mission can level up. And leveling up in this game works as promotions. And because everybody was a rookie going in, they all have enough experience. So we have a specialist, which means they have the ability to use the gremlin to hack remotely. And also if they get certain upgrades to heal people remotely. We have a gunner. We have a shinobi, which is like a sword user, and they can- they have the ability to stay stealth even when everybody else is revealed. Grenadier. Uh, we have a ranger. Rangers have a lot of attacks that let them attack multiple times per turn. And we have an assault. Assaults are good at moving very far before attacking. So we brought in some of the corpses. Uh, we are low on intel, which is not really a problem at this point because we aren't going to we aren't going to go to another region until we get more contacts available. So proving ground is coming in two days. The alien debris is one day. Uh, let's go to the guerrilla tactics school. We can put both of these rookies that are our only remaining rookies at the base in training. They will be unavailable while they're training, but you can never have too many specialists. So they are going to train to be specialists. And let's see, do we have enough? Uh, if a squad mate dies, gain random tactical bonuses for two turns. I'm not going to get that right now. I don't have enough supplies for it to be worth it. Okay. So I'm going to stop here and hopefully continue next time.